Thank you for joining us this evening at the Tower of David Museum. It's so exciting to be with you. And uh, I'm delighted, I'm saying a good morning to all those joining us from America. Erev Tov to those joining us from Israel. Good afternoon to those joining us from the UK and from Europe. And a special, just one second, Yakshama Vehok Shardens. To those of us joining us from Turkey, I hope I got that right. Please let us know in the chat where you're zooming in from. For the best experience today, I'm asking you all to put your microphones on silent during the presentations and to put your viewing settings to speaker view. It is my pleasure to invite you today to meet Elat Lieber, director of the Tower of David Museum, who is speaking to you right now outside in the courtyard of the Citadel. Elat. Hi, welcome to the Tower of David Museum. Um, this is a quite cold evening here in Jerusalem. We're waiting for the storm to come, but it's still not raining yet. You can see the beauty of this ancient citadel called Tower of David. This citadel was always the fortress of Jerusalem and represents 3,000 years of history from the time of the kings of Judea, probably King Hezekiah built the city wall right here. And then Hasmonean the Maccabean built their palace right here and King Herod the Great. And you can see all over the place remains from 3000 years of history. All the rulers of the city used to sit right here to protect ancient Jerusalem. The most impressive and modern part is from the Ottoman period, you can see the upper layer of the citadel was built by Sultan Suleiman the Magnificent in the 16th century. And this is so symbolic to have the pleasure to host here the exhibition of the fifth uh, Biennale of Jerusalem from a break to a breakdown. And this is the collaboration between Israeli artists to Turkish artists that located right here inside these ancient spaces from the Ottoman period, laying on the rich history from the past of Jerusalem. So um, let, let us take you to the story of the renovation of the site together with the history. Thank you, Elat. Can I ask everybody to put their uh, microphones on silent? Let's take a short look at the Tower of David Citadel and see why it's so fitting that this joint exhibition of jewelry designed by both Turkish and Israeli artists is exhibited here. The Tower of David Museum is located in this magnificently restored citadel. The Tower of David is a meeting point between East and West, as well as a bridge between the old city of Jerusalem and the new thriving and vibrant metropolis. It has served as a fortified area for at least 3,000 years and was the site of government since the days of the Maccabees. Through the centuries, Jerusalem was conquered, destroyed, and conquered again, but each time the city was rebuilt. In 1517, the Ottoman Turks conquered Jerusalem from the Mamluk rulers and governed the city for 400 years. Suleiman the Magnificent came to power in 1520 and ruled as Sultan for 46 years. Legend tells that Suleiman had a dream commanding him to rebuild and defend the city of Jerusalem, which had been neglected by the former rulers. Whether true or not, Suleiman not only rebuilt the walls of the old city, which of course are still standing today, he also improved and added to the Tower of David Citadel. He turned the neglected citadel into a commanding structure by building this magnificent gate and adding cannon sites 
to both the eastern and western sides of the citadel. Just as he restored the walls of Jerusalem, Suleiman restored the citadel walls and the guard rooms inside the fortress. Over the next 350 years, different Turkish rulers made additional improvements to the citadel. The minaret, one of the iconic symbols of the city, was added in 1635 and is known by all as the Tower of David. And just as the Turks renewed and renovated the citadel in the 16th century, 500 years ago, we are now in the midst of an historic renewal and upgrade of the museum that is bringing it into the 21st century. We are conserving and preserving the historic site, making sure that none of the improvements endanger the site or its historic heritage. We are also completely renewing the permanent exhibition spaces that are housed in the ancient guard rooms. The exhibition between a break and a breakdown is the first exhibition presented in our renewed gallery space, and we are thrilled to be able to show the contemporary jewelry exhibition of the 5th Jerusalem Biennale here. In order to restore the rooms and add the new infrastructure needed for 21st century exhibitions in the Turkish guard rooms, we had to completely gun them so we could present exhibitions complete with update lighting, Wi-Fi and optic fiber cables. All the wires had to be carefully fed in between the stones, with the grounding being replaced with natural and traditional limestone based. So when you see the exhibition, you'll know that behind the scenes, the wire are all hiding without harming the citadel's stone. When we visit the exhibition, take note of the space. It is a beautifully quiet space, a bright space with strong, clear lighting, allowing both the ancient walls and the wonderful exhibition to shine. And the ceiling might just look like a ceiling to you, but the acoustics are excellent. And that's no coincidence. Over the course of a year, we tasted different techniques of sound in solution brought from Italy to see which could work. In the end, an Israeli company actually produced the best solution. These vaulted ceilings have been specially coated in order to ensure the best sound without harming the original structure. In fact, we are making almost all of the citadel accessible, something that Suleiman may not have approved of. After all, fortresses are built to keep people out, and the citadel of Jerusalem did just that for centuries. But museums are built to welcome and include one and all, and we are proud that we will soon have universal access, with accessible doorways and ramps, and two new elevators that will truly make this ancient site open for all. Even the floor is special, as a unique concrete spread was poured that covers up the infrastructure but does not attach to the citadel walls so as not to harm them. The new floor makes the room accessible, and it was so moving for both me and the team to see that a visitor in a wheelchair attended our opening event. This would not have been possible even a few months ago. So at this very point where all meets new and east meets west, where art leads to meeting and discussion, it is fitting that for the very first exhibition in the first of the renewed galleries is this exhibition of the Jerusalem Biennale that highlights the cooperation between Turkish and Israeli artists. Between a break and a breakdown is being shown as part of the Fifth Jerusalem Biennale, which this year is called the Four Cubits. It is my pleasure to introduce you to the founding director of the Jerusalem Biennale, Rami Ozeri. Rami. Hi, good evening, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Rami Ozeri and I'm the founding director of the Jerusalem Biennale. I'm so pleased to be here this evening for us and to be part of this online program that highlights uh, the special exhibition uh, at the Tower of David Museum. The title of the fifth edition of the Jerusalem Biennale is Four Cubits. After the 2019 edition in which we called uh, For Heaven's Sake, 
This year, with the circumstances, we decided to go intimate. Four cubits is a translation of the Hebrew phrase, Arba Amot, and it's a symbol of a, a person's private space. So the whole Biennale this year deals with the connection between the contemporary art world and the private space. And we actually ask how does art function in private spaces and how does it reflect private spaces. This uh, exhibition by Ariela Vian is all about jewelry. And jewelry is such an intimate medium. It's such a private medium. Uh, I think you would all enjoy the presentation. You will enjoy meeting Ariel, meeting some of the artists. And I wish you a, a good evening and enjoy the program. I want to thank the team of the Tower of David, David Museum who initiated this program and brings it out. Um, so thank you so thank much you. for being with us. Thank you, Rami, for being here. And it's true, we have this evening uh, online artists in Israel, artists in Turkey. Uh, we're going into the studio. Um, studios of some of them and it's it's exciting and it's now my pleasure to introduce you to the curator of the exhibition between a break and a breakdown Ariel Levian. Since 2017 Ariel has been a lecturer at the Israel's prestigious Betzalel Academy of Art and Design. He's exhibited numerous solo and group exhibitions throughout the world and his pieces have been acquired internationally both by private collectors as well as selected museums. In 2018, Ariel was appointed the Israeli ambassador for the Art Jewelry Forum. And in 2019, Ariel received the design award from the Ministry of Culture. The list goes on. Ariel, it's my pleasure to have you here with us today. Ariel. Thank you, Thank you Caroline. It's my pleasure also. Uh, so Ariel, we're, we're meeting you in your studio um, just uh, outside Jerusalem in Mavaseret Sion, correct? Yes, um, my studio is two parts. Now I'm uh, at the downstairs hiding for my kids. <laughs> um, so how did you start out in jewelry design? Well, uh, I studied a bachelor's degree in Betzalel, uh, jewelry and fashion, and there I was acquainted with this uh, possibility uh, with jewelry, because uh, in the beginning I came to study fashion. Um, and in my second, my master degree, I um, dipped my research into jewelry, oh. and it was uh, just natural to continue with this uh, um, place for me. Well, I, I'm excited to be able to show everybody um, the exhibition. If I could just ask anybody who is not, uh, who is in, in our audience, if you could please put your speaker on silent. Thank you. Um, Rose, is it possible to put I'm going, everybody? I'm going to mute everyone and then try and um, I'll just mute everyone right now. Welcome to the exhibition between Break and a Breakdown, a contemporary jewelry exhibition being held here at the Tower of David Museum as part of the 5th Jerusalem Biennale. I spent much of the first lockdown of COVID-19 in my studio in Mevaser Zion, a suburb of Jerusalem. On one hand, the pandemic paralyzed some artists, but for others it gave them a sense of freedom, and this is what the pandemic gave me, energy and time to explore. I came across some work of contemporary jeweler, Borkusulu, in Istanbul and realized that I knew nothing of my counter craftsman in Turkey and reached out to her. And it was here that the idea 
to do the joint exhibition with Brom. It should have been a no-brainer as we share the same field of work in neighboring countries. But before COVID-19, I, did, I didn't know anyone in Turkey. I asked myself, how could this be? In what respect, it's a pity that I did not reach out years earlier. I met 16 amazing people, wonderful designers from Turkey, who I can call friends today. I also made a new friendship with the designer in Israel. Some of the artists are with us today, but my thanks are to all the artists. The exhibition is a joint exhibition between these 24 contemporary jewelry from Turkey and Israel, who although are all living in different uh, realities and are at different stages in life, have been brought together despite of, and perhaps even through, the COVID-19 pandemic. 16 of the jewelry are from Turkey and 8 are from Israel. During the past year, they have met via Zoom and the exhibition is a product of this active discourse and meetings between them. In groups of three, they discuss the impact of the pandemic on their work and look to see if there were any shared sentiment and challenges, despite the fact that they were stranger and estranged with close border and from different cultures. The end result is their work, jewelry as a mirror of our times. You can see that there is a wide range of techniques and materials being used here, from classic techniques of goldsmith and woodwork combined with the use of many materials, including copper, sterling silver, plastic bottles, threads, found objects, and dried flowers. Designers took their inspiration from shape, from nature, and from the four walls around them. So we've had a tour of the exhibition and we've seen the works, Ariel, but we'd love you to kind of delve in and show us a little bit more about uh, the, all the artists here. Um, tonight, we're going to meet three of the artists, but as we said, there were 24 artists. Just one question, you, you brought the group together, you then split the group into threes, and then what happened? Well, <clears throat> the process was uh, very interesting also from my side. Yes, I divided them to eight groups of three and, and then um, I just uh, like let go. You now each group decided uh, on a theme inside uh, the project and um, the way they want to work together. Some of them I know uh, did WhatsApp every day and some of them uh, by email and Zoom. And and the process was really interesting because I, I saw it from the like from the outside of the groups and I know some of the groups were a, a bit challenged by the situation and uh, and the outside situation but uh, in the end it was uh, great to see everything uh, come together. Fantastic. Let let's have a look at what happened. And, okay, so and can I can I just say if when Ariel is uh, mentioning an artist, if you are here with us, just unmute yourself and give us a hello so that we can actually see you. Okay. Ariel, are you sharing? Yes, do you see it or not? 
No, we don't. No, one second. Sorry, one second. Not a problem. So uh, I feel that we've been through, ah, fantastic. We're Sorry getting there, it. not quite. Yes, is it? Uh, we can see your computer screen, but not the full screen of the presentation. You need to open the presentation fully. Yeah, okay. Got it, sorry. Did it so many times and every time I get confused. Now you see Perfect. it, right? Yeah, great. <clears throat> well, unfortunately I didn't put all the artists inside, but uh, I, I, I will show you a, a quick glimpse of some of them. Um, We've just lost your screen, Ariel. Yes, yeah, sorry. I don't know what happened. Meanwhile, we can all admire your jewelry that you're wearing on your shirt. <laughs> sorry about that. One second. Would you like me to? Ah. Do, do you see it? Yeah, and then just make it full screen. If you go down to the bottom, you can make it into a into the. Perfect. Now Great. You see it. Perfect. Okay. Do you see Sarah? Okay. So um, the first one I chose was Sarah. Sarah Shachak is a she's an Israel designer, and um, during the Corona years, uh, Sarah. I'm here. I saw Great. <laughs> started watching the flower around her at uh, all stage of the growth, um, wilting and, and drying. A beauty will return thanks to the life cycle in which uh, they play an important role. Well, um, actually, what Sarah did was a, a 12 brooches, and we present them as, a, as a, almost as a necklace in the exhibition. Um, next is a Nazan pack. Um, <coughs> Um, uh, during the quarantine, social media was an important tool for her uh, to communicate with her loved ones, uh, virtually, of course. Uh, this necklace was made with photo taken during a WhatsApp conversation. I have to say, I really love this uh, piece. Um, <clears throat> Esgi, um, she's also from Turkey, from Istanbul. Uh, we want life to flow smoothly, like clear water, and sometimes it doesn't. It doesn't want at all. It feels as, as it's clogged. What happens then? Things that usually are not expected to come together accumulate it. It often look bad and feel bad, like the rest of material in clogged water. We may not realize it then, but if we look uh, closer, we discover many little treasures that may uh, one day be used uh, to us. Uh, actually, here I want to show a small movie. It's like 10 seconds, but it's I really like it. Uh, she put it on Instagram and I um, immediately asked her to send it uh, to me. Okay. Um, <clears throat> next one is the uh, uh, SNA. Um, um, the wall consists of five brooches, uh, i show you only two, uh, with a porcelain uh, centerpiece. Each is a flower imprint on the surface, representing the cycle of uh, nature. Uh, Akin chose porcelain as a material because it's uh, durable and fragile at the same time. For her, it's a good uh, metaphor for the human soul. In different times, such as the pandemic, our soul are strong and uh, vulnerable at the same time. Actually, Sene did Two pieces in the beginning and I, I, I asked her to do uh, more for the exhibition and I'm really glad I did. Um, you don't see the back but um, she also put something on the back. Uh, um, you all um, I guess know the picture from the invitation. Um, with her work titled What Now, uh, Burku aims to reflect her process of self-questioning um, brought by the changing life condition during the pandemic and her effort to adapt the new uh, lifestyle. She used mirror as a metaphor for self and circle as a symbol for a perfect and safe and a state of mind. 
Karen. Um, yeah, she's from Israel. Um, her title was Borders. Um, March 2020 was unexpected to Karen and, and probably for the rest of the world. Although it changed everything, she loved how close she felt. Ariel, to her. perhaps you can just tell us what the material is because everyone can read it while, while it's up. But if you could just tell us maybe what the material is from Karen. Um, yes, Karen uh, work with um, some kind of, of a stone and make uh, um, like borders. She make uh, five brooches um, and she make um, everything from, from stones. Um, okay, so uh, I won't read it. Hey, Caroline, uh, what I say, um, Leila worked with the thresholds uh, from aluminium and she did also five pieces in this exhibition. Um, she used them as, as a symbol for um, to show the, the border between uh, um, um, places and times. Um, Selene uh, did a, um, one piece, um, she called her both sides, and from one side she put a, a porcelain, a black one, and from the other side uh, she did a lot of uh, tiny flower with uh, animal on them. Um, uh, tell you what she did. Um, the, the groups talks about, uh, all, the, all the three of them talked about how they feel today. And the, the automatic as answer is like fine. And she just uh, saw um, pieces of uh, a leftover from, from her studio and just made the world fine. Um, I really like this uh, simplicity of the work. It's, it's from Please, uh, from Brass, sorry. Um, this is Enav, the same group. Uh, Enav Bonanza from Israel, uh, living now in, in France. Uh, in the past year, Enav felt imbalanced and dizzy, and she made the two necklaces that you can wear them also as, a, as a, um, rings. This is Dania Walk. Dania lives in uh, Tel Aviv. Um, the COVID-19 pandemic is a, is a symptom of ecological disruption. Um, Dania Walk with a pine tree. Um, she cut them and then tried to heal them. Uh, Dania made like, I think 14th or, or 15th uh, objects for the exhibition. And I, I had to choose the one that I like the most, but uh, she walks really fast and uh, it was amazing to see it. Uh, this is Moria. Uh, uh, Moria was my student uh, at Ritzalel, so I feel close to this project. Uh, what Moria did, she tried to um, ensemble uh, um, these objects and made it like a, a zero waste approach, emotional zero waste approach. It's made of uh, sterling silver. Um, it's really, it's really unique piece. Uh, that's it. I did it really fast. Hope you like it. Thank you, Ariel. It was really beautiful to see the pieces up close. Um, there are three artists, in fact, that you didn't see the works of, uh, and we're going to go to them live this evening. So the first person that I want to introduce you to is to Real Greenfeld. Real. Hello, are you with evening. us? Yeah, good evening, good morning. <laughs> it's great to see you, Real. Um, tell me, uh, how did you start off uh, with jewelry design? Uh, I started nine years ago. I went to Shankar College of Engineering Design. I studied uh, uh, the bachelor uh, for four years. It was amazing, four years. I wish I could go back. Uh, we studied everything from goldsmith, different techniques, uh, 3D modeling, design, especially jewelry design. Uh, it was really amazing. I studied so much. Uh, and afterwards, I decided I want to continue doing art and like uh, try to make things I like and 
try dif different techniques and uh, try to exhibit as much as I can. Then where, are you, where are you joining us from in Israel? I'm from Tel Aviv. Uh, and, and how did you hear about the exhibition? Uh, actually, I was scrolling in Facebook and then I saw an open call and it looks really interesting. So I uh, just uh, sent my, the things that was uh, uh, needed and I didn't know anything. It was really in the air, no one. <laughs> and then uh, I got the result that uh, I'm part of this uh, amazing group uh, and we met on uh, Zoom, everyone, all the artists, the Israeli and the Turkish with Ariel. And then the project began. Uh, well, you were, you kindly sent me in a clip of your studio, so we'll just see where you normally work from. You have it on the on your computer. I oh. have it here. Yeah. Um, let's just do this, and let's have a little look around your studio. Thank you for sharing it with us. <laughs> We're going to see your uh, work in a moment, but it's always nice to see where somebody works. I love all your boxes. <laughs> Are you from Tel Aviv, Ril? I'm, uh, my mom lives real, uh, really near to Tel Aviv and give a time. So I was actually, been to Tel Aviv all my life, and now I live in Tel Aviv, really close to my mom. My workshop is at her house, at my old uh, room. Thank you. Uh, so I'm going to show um, your pieces. And that way, uh, I, you know, I, I'd love you to talk a bit about them. Um, yes, just one moment. <clears throat> so um, this is a, a brooch that we can see. And here we're looking at a necklace. Can, it's made up of all these different pieces. Let's yeah, I will explain. Great. Do you want to explain or I should? No, 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 I think you should. Okay, so I usually work with a lot of ready-mades, which I collect and find, found and buy sometimes. So in this uh, work, in the necklace, in the neck piece, you can see a Petri dish, which I bought in a store for chemistry uh, things for school. And also the lens, which is uh, an old one from uh, Optimetrist, uh, supply. I bought it in a very nice shop in uh, Shuka Pishpashim in Jaffa. I always look for old things. I love buying old stuff and finding old stuff in the streets. Uh, and also uh, you can see in my work a lot of uh, fragments uh, which I found on the corona period with, from my house, from my garden from the street, I collect them and I put them uh, in small boxes. As you can see at uh, my workshop, I have a lot of boxes which contain a lot of memories and, and things I uh, found and uh, collect. Never know when I'm going to use them. So in this uh, project, I use these uh, fragments uh, from the home garden. And I think they represent memento mori, life and death. And uh, the lenses, you can move them around the jewelry and then you can see it from different perspective. One of them makes it larger, the other makes it smaller and you can play with it and it represents the different perspective of, uh, of different people of, on the period because it was a very, uh, for everyone, it was different situation, but at the end we were all in this together. So it showed the different perspective perspective that everyone has, I think, in my opinion. Did you feel that there were shared sentiments between you and the Turkish artists? Uh, it was very interesting, the meetings. It was like this on Zoom. We never met in person. Uh, 
it was at the at the beginning pretty awkward and then we started talking and then everyone uh, introduced us her life her home her studio the work she's done and then we got to know each other a bit uh, better and we talked about the period uh, the fact that we were isolated and uh, our leisure time and the time we spent was at home it was a cocooning period nesting period and this was the main thing that was in common the, the fact that we were at home on the one hand we were isolated uh, it wasn't a vacation we were just needed to be there but on the other hand we found a lot of uh, freedom in this uh, period at, at the home home has changed now i had time to do gardening and look at things differently and they also had time and they found different materials and we send each other and also the communication between us was different from uh, other periods via zoom via whatsapp was very different from the uh, things before the epidemic well thank you for being with us this evening thank you um, we're going to go straight to Istanbul. I've always wanted to be able to say that, straight to Istanbul. Um, and we'd love to be able to see Denise. <laughs> Hi, everyone from Istanbul. <laughs> Denise, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, try that again. I'm going to say to you, Yakshama ve hokshaldens. And hoş bulduk. Thank you. Thank you, Caroline. <laughs> So, um, Denise, uh, we're, it's lovely to see you in your studio. Can you give us a little quick tour? Okay, sure. Uh -huh. uh, your studio. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is my bench and uh, my tiny studio <laughs> and my sister. Hi, everyone. <laughs> and... Is in my tiny gallery, and some of my works you can see. And that's it. <laughs> so, um, I, I, uh, how did you hear about the exhibition? Uh, Karen, I'm sorry, please repeat again. How did you hear about the exhibition? Okay, uh, Ariel, our creator, uh, shared his uh, idea about exhibition with us, uh, with Jewelry Links, uh, the Turkish Contemporary Jewelry Collective. Uh, and uh, I, I, I heard uh, this project for him first time. Uh, and um, when you met uh, the Israeli uh, artists, did you what did you feel you had in common with them? Okay, um, uh, I think uh, we are all um, have common concerns uh, because of the periods and. Uh, it's really hard uh, for all of us and um, a hope and hopelessness uh, side by side um, but uh, uh, if you uh, believe that art is a remedy uh, creating is the hopeful and uh, bright side and so in this project um, all of us uh, choose um, the create, the creating, and all of us choose uh, to uh, uh, to react it, uh, to this period uh, in our own way. So um, this is hope. I think it, it this is come our common fear. Um, thank you. I, I'm going to share now just a, a little. A snippet of you working in your studio because I think it's uh, lovely to see just there with me. Mm -hmm.
you you were split into three groups what was the subject that you were dealing with denise okay uh, our group then uh, is uh, experience beats and um, after our conversations uh, we decided to express um, our own experiences uh, through the beats and uh, we were free about choosing uh, materials uh, techniques and forms so three of us uh, made um, different beats uh, in our own ways I want to show you uh, the work that Denise did. Just one moment. Mm -hmm. um, here we go. Um, so these are the beads that you made Denise I want to know what, um, if we look, this is the back, so you were using wood and silver? Yes, uh -huh. wood and silver. And if we look at the beads, we can see that there are some numbers here. So are these random numbers or they've got meaning behind them? Uh, yes, yeah, sure. Um, every uh, be, every uh, marks and numbers have different meanings. Oh, would you mind telling us a few of the meanings behind some of the numbers? Okay, sure. Uh, uh, if you want, uh, I can read the meanings of some. Um, for example, um, two. Uh, I have aged two more years in this period, but some will never have aged anymore. And one more. Uh, 16. Uh, we try to get used to a thing called new normal since 16 months. Lockdowns or limitations are defined accordingly to rise of number of cases. Days pass in a nervous space. All plans suspended for an indefinite period. And what, what's uh, about number four? Okay. And four, four. <laughs> okay. Uh, daily life for under 18 and over 65 was limited seriously in my country because of they were in high risky groups. These two groups, except two days and just four hours, were under the lockdown regardless of how to conditions. Pandemic periods that wasn't managed correctly by the government caused lots of physical and psychological damages alongside lots of human rights abuses. And you talked also to me before about number three. Number three, uh, okay. It was announced that a total of three doses vaccine needed for effective pandemic control, including a reminder dose. The vaccine was procured too late in my country because of the government policies and the pandemic was brought under the control really hard. Follow policies about the vaccination in the world showed us one more time that all people are equal, but some people are more equal than others. Thank you for taking us behind the scenes of your jewelry and, and into your studio we really appreciate it and uh even though right now uh we're we're far apart physically it's wonderful we feel that you're very close and in the citadel and that is for all of you i can see that there are other artists here uh Burko, i can see you on the screen and i'm sure that there are others with us this evening um i'm very excited that you are here mm -hmm. uh, we're going to go now 
to Efrat, um, who is with us also from Hello, um, video. Hi, Efrat. Hi. Hello Where from Tel Aviv. Where are you meeting us from? I'm from Tel Aviv, Jaffa. Fantastic. Uh, well, thank you for being with us this evening. Efrat has sent me um, also a video to show us about her work process. So just one moment and we'll see if Frat at work. Um, I'm just going to... Uh... Uh, and here we go. Thank you, Ifrat. So how did you become a jewellery designer? Um, actually, it came totally accidentally. It's, uh, I have a big story of my life. It's uh, a dreamer and accidentally. So I wanted to be in uh, Mexico and uh, accidentally I uh, realized that what they do, it's a jewellery. So I said, okay, it will be a jewellery just for staying there. And I've uh, been there for three months, uh, studying um, very intensive um, day to evening every day. Uh, while I backed, I uh, figure out that I'm a part of a dynasty of jewelry smith, and <laughs> totally. And uh, with this, I went to totally accidentally. I dream to be an artist while I will grow, but. Uh, I didn't imagine that a degree in Bezalel Academy, so that's what I've done. Actually, uh, with uh, a, a lot of pressure from my friends in school, they every year they kept me to stay. So uh, after a few years, um, maybe five like that, uh, we opened together a gallery in Tel Aviv, three of us. And uh, I run this uh, business totally accidentally. I'm an artist in my soul, but to do my dreams, I had to be a uh, businesswoman. So uh, yeah, uh, for nine years, it was a shop. While I locked the door, I told my friend, won't be a shop again. So I had a, a new dream to have my loft and that's what I'm staying now. So it's actually my apartment apartment and my studio together so actually i came prepared to the corona time so, <laughs> um, yeah i'm i want to to uh show your work um and do you always use the same uh material for your work and no actually i'm totally allergy to copper <laughs> and uh, I usually I work only with gold and silver and um, um, for this project I wanted to do something big so I had to use um, uh, low materials uh, so yeah that's what comes out um, as we zoom into it, we can see that there is writing, and we saw you in the video actually writing. What are the words? Uh, is it a poem? Is it a text? Or is it random? And why did you cut it? 
to say the truth is that it's a letter, um, very old letter, uh, that it's uh, actually uh, means to me uh, a beginning and end of a relationship. Uh, so um, the first impression for uh, the subject of the um, the exhibition was uh, a crack man, and uh, while I was making the um, um, uh, I forgot the word uh, the piece of uh, the, we tried I tried many things to do and that. Uh, and while I did it, I felt like I'm cutting something. And then I realized that it's uh, actually cutting paper. So it came to, to this idea. And actually it was uh, a process that I had to suggest while I was uh, having all those mess with the Corona. Um, so that was the most uh, deeper one so I had to deal with this. Thank you, thank you so much, Efrat. Um, I think we've seen through, all, all the pieces of art were really wonderful and we're thankful for everybody for participating with us this evening, Efrat and Denise. Um, and Real, thank you for letting us uh, into behind the scenes of your creations this evening. We're opening it up for any questions because everybody is here. So is Ariel, so is Eilat Lieber, the director of the museum. Um, if anyone has any questions, then uh, please ask away. You can either write your questions or you can uh, send a, um, a question on the chat if you wish to. And in the meantime, I just want to be to say that I'm really surprised. The, the studios are really clean. I wish my studio was that clean and organized. <laughs> my studio is a mess. <laughs> I, I'm trying to see uh, how many how many uh, have we got of the artists on here. Are there any other of the artists that would like? to say anything that have joined us. Hi, I am Burju from Istanbul. Do you hear me? We do, thank you for joining us. Thank you for organizing this evening. It was a great pleasure to be part of this exhibition. It was great. Uh, and it was very nice, like three artists shared their you know, background and all through the process. Uh, we're all, uh, very happy, in fact, because the pandemic has been, a, you know, like a breakdown for us, but uh, Ariel made it like a break for all of us. And uh, in the uh, presentation, uh, some of the artists are missing, but I think when we share, uh, I think with the participants, we are going to complete all the uh, uh, artist work, I think, uh, in the presentation, Ariel. Uh, am I right? Yes, you are right. Just because yes. we don't have time. There is two presentations. <laughs> yeah, okay. So. Okay. Uh, because there are a lot, every piece is unique and very interesting. So I want everyone uh, to see what we have been, you know, working all together. Thank you. The, the um, I don't know when you joined Broker, but all the pieces were definitely shown in the film. So if you saw the film at the very beginning, they were all shown there as well. Mm -hmm. So okay. uh, thank you. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, what uh, have had you the the Turkish artist Denise and Burka had you met Israeli designers before? Uh, with the uh, my group member, 
I didn't meet her before, uh, just with Sarah. Uh, we were with her uh, in a North Museum uh, in Florida, uh, like a couple of years ago. Uh, just with her, uh, I met in person before. Uh, but uh, except her, uh, I, I knew, of course, Ariel before uh, through uh, social media, uh, but not my group member. And, and, so it is, yeah, and it's a great opportunity, uh, you know, to know more people and to work together more closely and to understand also from other, you know, different geographies. So it was a real pleasure. And Efrat and uh, Real, had you met any Turkish jewelry designers before? Many years ago, I've been in Istanbul and uh, I went into a, a gallery and I'm, I was very impressed. It was very modern and uh, intelligent and I was like, wow, it's, it's special for me. Elat, but, you, you are also a graduate of Betzalel. Um, and perhaps as we come to the end, uh, it would be lovely um, if you would like to close for a moment with, um, with how the art is bringing people together. Elat, are you there? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, so uh, for us, it's the closest circle since, uh, no, no, I don't know if you're aware, but uh, the Tower of David was the first art museum in Israel. I'm talking the days of the beginning of Bezalel about 100 years ago. This was the first location that uh, people came to see art and design during the British mandate. It was the, all the community of the city. We're talking about uh, uh, Jewish artists together with Muslims and Christians. And the Tower of David is still the real bridge between communities and people in the city in the heart of Jerusalem between East and West, the old city and the modern city. Uh, this is the only museum in the world that tells the full story of Jerusalem. And uh, this is the perfect bridge between people. And um, we're so happy uh, to show this exhibition right here uh, because we learned from COVID uh, that we have to collaborate uh, actually to, to work together for a better world and uh, since art is a universal language and uh, above all the human creation is eternal just like the Jerusalem stones so uh, I really want to invite you to see this exhibition to visit the Tower of David Museum hope you the Turkish artists will be able to visit uh, the Tower of David and Jerusalem uh, soon and I uh, really want to thank you for joining us this uh, evening, this morning. And uh, thank you, Caroline and Rose, for organizing this uh, um, meeting. And of course, to the Jerusalem Biennale, to Ariel and Rami. Um, this is the best, uh, I think, way uh, to, uh, to work, to, to live your creation, your young, uh, creation for the for the world right here in Jerusalem. Thank you for joining us and we look forward to seeing you all again soon. Good evening. Good evening. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. bye. Thank you all. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Bye bye. bye. Thank, you. Thank you. It was a pleasure for me. Thank you for being with us.